Frankie Dillon, this is Will Long and Greg Nerickel, and today we'll be and today we'll be presenting Your Void. I have a very Your Void treats melanoma, a type of skin cancer. I personally have a very personal connection to melanoma and skin cancer. This is my grandmother, and she's had melanoma twice, once on her forehead and once on her back. Luckily, both times they were spotted early, and she survived. Here is my nana and she got skin cancer, although not melanoma, on her leg. Luckily, she survived as well. And here's my grandpa Gooch. He has had skin cancer once, and also he got skin cancer six days ago. Luckily, it was detected early, and we do believe that he'll be okay. Despite my grandparents living, melanoma is a big issue. It's the most deadly form of skin cancer, and it's the sixth leading cancer in the United States. Seven people are diagnosed with melanoma every hour, and one person dies every hour. The stage four five-year survival rate for melanoma is only 15 to 20 percent, and the stage four 10-year survival rate is 10 to 15 percent. That's very low. If you've gotten sunburn five times in general, your chances for contracting melanoma are up 80 percent. That's kind of a big deal. Also, melanoma is one of only three cancers to have an increasing mortality rate. Right. Oh, yeah. Now I'm gonna pause your time here just for a second. But uh, where did you get the statistic if you have skin cancer, if you have uh, five sunburns, your chance of getting melanoma is 80%? Um, skin, like Skin Cancer Foundation or something like that. Um, it's on our, um, what's it called, our credits. Okay. And I can show you afterwards. Okay. Okay, so your boy was developed by Bristol Myers Squibb and approved by the FDA on March 25, 2011. It is used to treat metastatic unresectable melanoma, also known as stage 4 melanoma, which means the melanoma is spread to other parts of the body or can't be treated with surgery. And your boy is administered intravenously. Okay. <coughs> All right. So in order to figure out, in order to know how your boy works, you first need to know how T cells attack antigens. So first, a T cell will receive a signal from something called an APC, which is an antigen-presenting cell. And in this signal, the T cell will be told exactly which type of antigen to attack, which in our case will be a cancer cell. And so once the T cell receives the signal to attack, the T cell will attack in short on and off bursts. And so basically to do this, the T cell has two proteins on its surface, CD28 and CTLA4. And what CD28 does is it turns the attacks on and CTLA4 turns the attacks off. And as you can see in this, and um, the way these two proteins work together is CD28 and CT CTLA4 they bind to, they are activated by the same ligands, CD80 and CD86. And so as you can see in the picture here, when CD80 and 86 is bound to CD28, T cell attacks are turned on. And when CTLA4 is bound to CD80 and CD86, T cell attacks are turned off. Any questions about this? Because this is really important to understand in your report. Josh? What is apoptosis in Oh, that's like different because then that's not like really good. Really, but it's basically just like if it's not bound to one of them, the T cell will have to die pretty much because it's not attacking anything. I don't know. Could they like bind at the same time if they both like exist? Uh, no, because CDA, CDA6, there's only one ligand, so it has to bind to one of them at a time. Because there's only so one. Then, like, what changes it? All right, so basically with the T cell, when it attacks an antigen, it'll turn, it'll like attack on for a short period of time, then turn off, and then it'll see that there's more antigens, and then it'll attack more. Do you get it? So it's the same ligand that's binding to both CD28 and CTLA4, so what differentiates between the two that like makes it bind to CTLA4 versus CD28? Well, when, when the T cells first go to attack, it'll bind to CD28 because it's now it's going to attack. And then the attack's turned off, so it'll bind to CD4. Yeah. 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 Okay, so 
So this is where your void comes in. Your void binds to CTLA-4 and blocks its binding with its ligand CD4, uh, CD80 and CD86. As Will said, CTLA-4, when activated by CD80 and CD86, decreases T-cell activation and prevents autoimmunity, or your body's ability to produce an immune response against its own cells. So in this binding between CTLA-4 and CD80 and CD86 is inhibited by your void, now there is T-cell activation and T-cell proliferation resulting in a strength in the immune system. Are there any questions about that? Okay, so here's the pathway. Your void inhibits CD80 and CD86 binding with CTLA-4. This binding between CD80 and CD86 and CTLA-4 would have activated CTLA-4's inhibitory signal that then prevents T cell activation. Are there any questions on the pathway? Okay, so here, this third image is pretty much just a combination of the first two. The first image here is showing uh, the activation of a T cell as a result of the binding between CD28 and B7, which is the same thing as CD80 and CD86. And then the second image here is showing the absence of T cell activation when CTLA4 is expressed and binds with uh, CD80 and CD86. And here, now the third image is showing the inhibition of CTLA-4 by your boy, leaving CD28 bound to CD80 and CD86, and then resulting in T-cell activation. Are there any questions? So does the drug directly affect CTLA-4? Does it like yeah. directly attach to it? Ipilimumab, that's the antibody. It literally binds to CTLA-4 and then prevents uh, CD80 and CD86 from binding to CTLA-4. The graph here shows the mechanism of your void in action. Your void inhibits CTLA4 and that activates CD28. So essentially, your void makes sure that CD28 stays active. CD28 is big in upregulating the immune system. When CD28 in this experiment was continually activated, luciferase was produced and that produced a glow because luciferase produced light. Here on the chart, RLU stands for relative light units. And this stand, and this shows how much urovoid is being administered. As you can see, as there's more urovoid administered, there's more light being given off. That means that there's more urovoid attaching to CTLA-4 and activating CD28. Yes, Josh? What's making it, what's making it glow? What's making it glow? Um, IL-2 and luciferase that they attach to. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, so phase three study was done containing your boy to test the effectiveness of your boy on people. So people in the study were either given DTIC and placebo or your boy and DTIC. And what DTIC is, it's a chemotherapy drug to treat metastatic melanoma. And so basically, um, after the study, what they found, as you can see in the graph, people with your boy and DTIC and Apolumab is just your boy again. People with your boy and DTIC consistently had a higher survival rate than people with placebo and DTIC, which shows that your boy was effective in helping people live longer. And another thing they found through this study is that your boy does have some immune mediated side effects. About 10% of people experience severe immune mediated side effects. This is because your boy, since it boosts the immune system a lot, it can cause the immune system in some people to attack parts of its own body, which are not good. This is not good. So if you're on your boy, it's extremely important to tell your doctor if you have any side effects at all. Josh? What is DTIC? It's a chemotherapy drug to treat metastatic melanoma. So DTIC plus placebo is more effective than your boy plus DTIC? There's lots of answers because of mine. That's the percentage of patients surviving. Um, Oh, I got oh, it. Yeah, yeah, like the circles and things, those are censored people. So basically what that means since it was done on people, like some people will like drop out of the study and stuff. You get that? So they want to account for those people, so those circles and things represent people just like dropping out or something like that. Sean? Is this for overall survival? Yeah. Do you guys have a median for both? 
placebo versus DTIC, and then and then Nervoi um, versus DTIC. We'd like to thank Philip Leopold, Luke and Mary Gooch for helping us with this presentation. binding with like the on and off thing that you're talking about? I don't, it's just like a short period of time. Wait, so it binds to something that turns it on, like on the cancer cell? Um, this isn't no, a cancer cell. Oh. Angen. The, angen, the antigens in the antigen presenting cell are produced by the cancer cells and then enter the ABC through phagocytosis. And the T cells are able to recognize that antigen and attack the source, which is the cancer cells. Josh? How many cancers does this apply to? Right now, it's it's just um, used on melanoma. It's been approved for melanoma. It, it's just been approved for melanoma, but it is in testing for a couple other cancers. Like lung cancer and prostate cancer. Is it approved specifically for a certain type of melanoma or yeah, just melanoma yeah, in general? Okay. Which means that it, uh, melanoma spread to other parts of the body or can't be treated with surgery. Okay. 
Has this been treated to lesser stages? The place where the drug was developed in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. Um, is this being used? This be used as a first line treatment for stage four? Well, it's the most popular treatment for melanoma right now. 